Welcome back to another episode of Rock Boys Football, the five most important true freshmen on this Florida Gators roster heading into 2024. I personally, one of the more exciting conversations for me to have where you know we talk about these guys so much in the offseason on the recruiting trail, and now we get the opportunity to you know, kind of call our shot, figure out who are going to be the impact playmakers for this Florida Gators program as year one dudes, right? We saw a lot of these guys emerge in the 2023 season, Eugene Wilson, Jordan Castell, guys like Kelby Collins. This Florida roster has a ton of talent to true freshmen that will play some sort of role for this Florida Gators program in the 2024 year. We're going to do our best to predict the five most important freshmen. Really excited to get into this conversation now before we do it, as always, one of the Florida Gator fans, look, I don't feel great about leaving some of the names off this list. So let it fly in the comments section. I know there's going to be some names on this list that are a little bit controversial. That's the beauty of doing some of these preseason lists. So I would love for the Florida fans to throw your throw your names down in the comments section, call your shot. And of course, if you all do enjoy the content, consider subscribing to the channel. The amount of support the Florida fans have shown all off season it you know, it truly does mean the world. So if y'all do enjoy the content, consider subscribing to the channel. Without further ado, let's get into this one. I want to start with uh, one of my guys in the 2024 class. That is wide receiver Tank Hawkins. And it comes down to when you are the fastest football player on the field, you have the ability to make some of these game-changing plays. That's exactly what Tank Hawkins is, right? A 10-4-5 in the 100-meter dash. This kid isn't just fast. He's Florida fast. You know, he is going to be immediately – one of the fastest players in all of college football. And one of the bigger talking points that we've had with this Florida Gators offense is how can we manufacture more explosive plays in the passing attack, accessing the deeper third. Now, the first story is, hey, we need the offensive line to be better in pass protection to let some of these longer developing routes downfield play out. We think the offensive line is going to be better. Now, the second conversation is, hey, we know Graham Mertz has the ability to push the ball down the field. Who are the wide receivers going to be that emerge as the guys making those plays? I think you have a lot of different names, right? The veteran Tremir DK coming over from Wisconsin certainly can do it. Youngster Ada Mizell going into year two, I expect him to play a large role. But when you're Tank Hawkins and there's no safety over top and you get a matchup in man coverage, he has that ability to just run right by opposing defensive back. Speed translates. When you are the fastest football player on the field, whether it's high school, whether it's college, there are going to be ways – for you to impact this Florida Gators offense, I think that's the value that Tank Hawkins brings to this Florida program, whether it's end of rounds, whether it's screens, whether it's just straight nine balls, asking him to work vertically down the field. This kid has game-changing speed. I don't think he's going to be a starting wide receiver, but there are going to be plays where Florida puts Tank Hawkins on the field, and he's going to have that ability to change the game in one play. So give me Tank Hawkins coming in at number five. Number four, we're going to go to a guy that, you know, it's so funny because all offseason, I feel like we've talked so much Florida football. I feel like we've talked about just about every scholarship football player on this roster. But one guy that kind of flying under the radar, that is no longer flying under the radar after the injury to Jamari Lyons, is Makai Borio, three-star, four-star defensive lineman from the state of Georgia, depending on the services you look at. Now, why is Makai going to be one of the most impactful true freshmen Florida is going to look to some of these depth pieces to replace someone like Jamari Lyons at that nose position. Now you have Cam Jackson, who's going to take the majority of the snaps. Then you have a guy in Des Watson, who is going to play a lot as well. Apparently he's in better shape, but we all know Des Watson can't give you that many snaps. Well, good thing you have another body that is almost identical to Des Watson and Mackay who's actually lost a little bit of weight down to 350 pounds. So he's still a monster in the middle of the, that defense. But he's a guy that probably can give you some reps early as a true freshman just because of the sheer size and physicality that he can overwhelm offensive linemen with. Now, is Mikai going to be a guy that goes for five-plus sacks and eight tackles for a loss? Probably not. But he's a guy that's going to two-gap. He's going to eat up double teams, let these linebackers play downhill, give some other matchups for other defensive linemen. That's the role that Makai's going to play. We want him to play that same role that Desmond Watson plays. And as you go into your depth and as we look at this Florida roster and say, who's going to step up on the, on the inside of the defensive lineup, I think Makai has that ability and certainly the body type 
to be a very impactful player for this Florida Gators program year one as a true freshman. Going to number three, this one, <laughs> this one was tough. I'm going to go with Miles Graham at the linebacker spot. I don't think Miles Graham starts the season as a starting linebacker for Florida. I don't think it's crazy to say that he might end the season as a starting linebacker. Now you look at Shamar James and Pop Howard. I think that is an extremely dynamic linebacker duo. That's who I think are going to be the starters. Now you look at Miles Graham. The reason that I gave Miles Graham the nod over Aiden Childs, two elite linebackers. <laughs> you guys know I'm massive fans of both. Miles Graham one was in for the spring, so I think he has a better understanding of the defense. But you know, more importantly. Miles Graham, you go back to the high school film and you say, this kid is college football ready, not only from a physicality standpoint, but from an IQ standpoint. One of the things we love the most about Miles Graham is how smart of a linebacker that he was. I mean, consistently fitting the runs the right way, getting off blocks, going sideline to sideline. You look at the Florida Gators depth chart at linebacker and say, all right, Shamar James, and you got obviously Pup Howard. After that, you have some other veterans, but I think guys like Miles Graham and Aiden Childs probably offer a little bit more upside. And, you know, as they continue to get their feet wet within this Florida Gators defense, I think you're going to play a lot of football, especially with Coach Roberts coming in and kind of coaching up some of these young linebackers. So it could have been Aiden Childs. It could have been Miles Graham. I went with Miles Graham because when I go back to the high school film, you know, I just get the sense that Miles Graham is – you know, a little bit more developed between the ears than Aiden Childs, but both of these linebackers could certainly play a lot of football for this Florida program in the 2024 season. Going to number two, and let's talk about the quarterback too, DJ Lagway. Now, again, is DJ Lagway the starting quarterback for this Florida Gators program? No, that's Graham Mertz. Could he potentially be the starting quarterback some point down the road? Absolutely. But even if he's not, I think DJ Lagway is going to play a very heavy hole, heavy role so I, you know, I kind of look at it and say it's very similar to the Cade McNamara, J.J. McCarthy conversation that we as Michigan fans had a couple of years ago when J.J. McCarthy was this young, talented, true freshman that wasn't going to beat Cade McNamara out for that quarterback one spot heading into 2021, but certainly was good enough and too talented to keep off the field. And I think what's so fascinating about DJ Lagway is there's a lot of different ways you can get him involved in this Florida Gators offense. Obviously, a 6'3", 240 pounds, having rushed for over 1,000 yards during his senior year of high school. This kid can certainly run the rock, but he also is just purely one of the more talented quarterbacks that we see in the country. So whether it's some red zone packages, whether it's just packages designed to you know, throw some wrinkles in with this Florida Gators offense, or whether it's DJ Lagway just straight up having to come in for Graham Mertz at some point during the season, DJ Lagway is going to play for Florida, and he's going to have a massive impact on this Florida Gators roster. Going to my number one impact player, and again, I think a lot of people are probably going to be upset that it left out LJ McCray. I'll talk about LJ McCray really quick. I think LJ McCray is going to play for Florida. I look at him and say, all right, Tyreek Sapp and Justin, Justice Boone, they're sneaky, really good football players for Florida. Obviously, Justice Boone coming back from the injury. I thought Tyreek Snap had a very solid season for Florida. LJ McCray is going to play, but I don't know if he needs to play like some of these other true freshmen do in the 2024 season. Somebody that's going to need to play is Jaden Boss, particularly to start the season with the injury to Montreal Johnson. You look at Jaden Bond and say there's a very real possibility that even when Montreal Johnson comes back from the injury, Jaden Ball is going to be, you know, a focal point of this rushing attack for Florida. I think there's a really good opportunity for him to grab that running back two spot. You look at Jaden Ball and say, one, he has that physicality to play early as a freshman. He's been coming along in pass protection, can catch the ball out of the backfield. But most importantly, this kid is a very, very good carrier of the football. And you look at Montreal Johnson, you make no mistake, he's going to be the workhorse of this Florida Gators rushing attack. But as he comes back from injury, Jaden Ball is going to have an opportunity to really cement himself into that running back rotation. I don't think it's crazy to say that Jaden Ball is going to be the leading rusher in that week one game against the Miami Hurricanes, but he's going to play a lot as a true freshman. And I think he's really good. This was a a really sneaky good grab by Billy Napier and the staff late in the process in that 2024 cycle. Give me Jaden Baugh as being the most impactful true freshman, potentially the running back two and maybe even running back one to start this season for the Florida Gators. Would love to hear 
some feedback from you guys in the comments section. Again, left a lot of really good football players off the list. Jameer Grimsley at cornerback. I would consider him a true football. Well, he is a true freshman coming over from Alabama in the transfer portal. A lot of good names. Those are the five that I decided to go with. Again, would love to hear from you all in the comments section. Appreciate you guys rocking with it. If you all do enjoy the content, consider subscribing to the channel. Appreciate you guys. We'll talk to you all later. Peace.